that tune was uh, a tune called Bouncing with Bud, written by the incomparable Bud Powell, one of the great piano players of jazz. Uh, again, my name is Matt McKeever. I want to introduce the band here up on front so you know um, who these incredible musicians are. So uh, back here on drums is Kyle Honeycutt. Here's uh, Ben Wheeler. And uh, Dave Black on guitar. So uh, we're going to be playing a wide variety of styles and periods of jazz here today, and uh, I'm so grateful to be here um, to get this opportunity from Zach's Quest. Um, like Zach said, uh, I've known Zach and many of the Zach's Quest guys for such a long time. Derek and Mark and John and Ben and Chris and George and, and Jacob and just the whole crew. These guys have all um, you know, been friends for a very long time, and I've always you know, bought my horns here. In fact, uh, I think we have, I have sort of Maybe, I don't know if it's a little bit of trivia or not, but I, I think we bought maybe perhaps the first horn in this shop. I don't know, I'm not sure if that's totally true or not, but I bought a Pimora Alto. It would have been like 2000, uh, I don't know, what would it have been? 2007, I guess, right out of high school. My dad and I came up here. And my dad had been following Mark, I, I guess, online and sort of seeing the horns that he was selling, and we finally came to the shop, and there were still boxes and everything was all around, and that was when I bought my first horn. So. Um, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a family to me, it's been such a treasure for St. Louis, so I'm so appreciative of them giving uh, me and this group of people an opportunity to play for you. So, uh, the next tune we're going to do is a tune that I wrote. Uh, I, I, we played this with um, a group that um, included uh, one of my best friends, uh, his name's Nathan Jadko. Um, as many of you know, Nathan passed away uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, his, his um, you know, presence is still felt here in the St. Louis music scene, so I, I couldn't help but um, do uh, some tunes that I play with him, as well as later in the set we're going to do a tune that he um, wrote, but um, just even for, you know, people who aren't jazz musicians, um, you should know who this guy is, and you should, and his name should still be set around St. Louis, and his music should still be performed, because he's uh, one of the, you know, one of the best musicians I ever met in my life. So anyway, this is a tune that I, I played with him uh, and a group. Uh, about a year ago, but we haven't played it in a while, so uh, this is my original, and it's called Heartland. Enjoy. <clears throat> Thank you. 
And I do want to let you know, if, if at any point, this is, this is um, Mark and Zach made it very clear that this is a very relaxed environment. Don't feel like it has to be, you know, so, like we're at the bistro and you can't say anything. Um, so if you want to ask a question anytime, please do. I'm happy to answer any questions um, you may have. Uh, at any point in between songs. Preferably not during a song, but uh, <laughs> you know, like during a bass solo, don't do that. Uh, but, but if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. Or we can just wait till the end. But um, I have a question. Yeah. Do you have that last song recorded on? Um, we don't, we, we recorded it, we did KDHX session. Um, it, was, it was actually for uh, Dawn Weber. If you know Dawn Weber, she's a great local trumpet player and we've been collaborating together for over a decade now. Um, and it was actually for a promotion for her show at the Bistro, and we did that tune. Um, it was myself, uh, and Nathan, Jerry Mazuka, Bob Debu, um, and Don playing this tune with both of the horns playing. So really nice recording. It came out really nice. Um, it's on SoundCloud somewhere. If you look up KDHX, we did a session with that tune. So um, it turned out really nice. Everybody played really beautifully on it. So, um, so yeah, thank you. It's, it's, it's uh, a really fun tune to play. Speaking of Nathan, uh, we're going to do a tune of his. This was on uh, Nathan's record, which he released um, just a couple months before he passed. Um, and this was one of my favorite tunes on the record. I love every tune on the record. It's an incredible record if you haven't uh, found it yet. It's called Catch by Nathan's Jack Co. I think it's only on Bandcamp right now, but I think we're sort of in the process of getting it out onto uh, other services, but it would be worth your while to uh, purchase the album. But this was actually a vocal tune uh, sung by one of his friends named Christy Coleman. Uh, Nathan. He wrote it, he's written a couple tunes for vocalists. In fact, there's a record out there of him playing with uh, uh, a Chicago-based singer, just him playing piano and her playing, um, her, her singing, and it's really beautiful. And a lot of the tunes that Nathan wrote that had lyrics, he wrote all the lyrics himself. So not only was he a great composer, he was a great lyricist as well. Um, unfortunately, you won't hear the lyrics because I'll be playing it. Uh, I'm not gonna attempt to sing it, but a really, really beautiful tune. And like I said, please go home and check this out. Uh, it's a tune called Young Folks, written by Nathan Jacko.
tune. We're going to do a contrafact. Contrafact being um, a tune that has um, chord changes based on another song, but a different melody. So this uh, particular tune is based on the tune Confirmation by Charlie Parker, uh, one of the preeminent saxophone players of jazz history. Um, he, in fact, wrote a lot of tunes that were contrafacts, but this was one of his original tunes that became a contrafact by someone else. And this contrafact was written by um, a saxophone player named Jerry Berganzi, who, um, again, is one of the big names in saxophone right now. It's a really, really fun arrangement of uh, confirmation done in more of a Latin style. He calls it On the Brink. So if you recognize the chord change, maybe you could hum along to confirmation, but also hear um, this really cool new melody that goes along with it. On the Brink.
great. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. you know, let's, um, I think I might want to do a break in the middle here because I'm going to all break for a second. So let's switch up teams. So let's say that I'll come back to it. Can we do stuff in traffic? Sure. All right, let's do stuff in traffic and we'll break for like 10. All right, we're going to do um, a tune written by Dave Black. I've had just this incredible fortune of working with Dave Black. For a long time now, um, my first, when I started at Webster, let's see, I guess it was 2007, fall of 2007, I, um, well actually my first semester, I didn't sign up for combos because I didn't know what was going on and I forgot to sign up. And I wasn't, I wasn't actually in a jazz combo my, my first semester. My second semester, I figured out what I was doing at college and managed to sign up for so a jazz combo. the first semester, he got stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so, well, second semester, I actually got to work and do it. It was a combo with Zach, um, and it was such a cool experience. Uh, I, I also had the fortune of, uh, when I was in high school, studying with um, Mike Karkowitz, who was my high school band director. Um, those, those of us who, who know Mike, he's a Incredible saxophone player, but also a great uh, woodland doubler, plays with the Muni, plays in the Fox. I had the fortune of having him as a band director and getting to work with him every single day. Um, I look up to him sort of as like a musical father figure, so he sort of pushed me in the direction of, of going to Webster and said, this would be a really good place to go if you want to do music. Uh, you know, you can work with me, you can work with Paul the Marinus, you can work with uh, these incredible uh, teachers at Webster, which still the faculty at Webster is top notch and, and, and the best you can find in the area, bar none. Um, but my first combo I was in, I was with Dave, and um, we had so much fun doing all sorts of different tunes. I remember we did um, Lee Morgan's Sidewinder, that was one tune that always stuck on my head. We did No Mo, which was uh, Rhythm Changes. I, I remember uh, all those tunes that we played, it was so much fun, and now I, I have the fortune, you know, 10 years in the future, 12 years in the future, of playing with Dave regularly. We actually just had um, a really awesome concert at the Sheldon, and unfortunately it was that night that we had the tornadoes where we were down in the basement, so we were down in the basement at the Sheldon um, like five minutes before showtime, so, um, but for those who were there, they saw an incredible concert, um, and these were all Dave's original compositions, and I'm just humbled beyond belief to be able to play with Dave and get to play his compositions, and um, it's, it's, it's been one of the highlights of my musical career uh, to get to play with him and these guys uh, regularly, so we're going to do one of Dave's tunes that I remember buying his CD, it's a CD called Destinations, you should check it out. I remember buying it in college and playing it nonstop in my car and listening to it. And, and this tune always um, really stuck out to me, uh, not only because the composition was so cool, but because of Paul Demaris' uh, soprano sax playing on it. And I always wanted to play the tune, so when Dave said, oh, let's play this tune on this gig, I said, oh my gosh, this is like a dream come true that I get to play this tune that I listened to for years and years on the CD and wore the CD out so I wouldn't play in my car anymore. So we're going to do that tune and I'm really excited to do it and I hope I do it justice. Um, this is a tune called Stuck in Traffic. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, and the feeling is totally dangerous. More than that. And after this tune, um, we're probably just going to take like a quick 10 minutes just so we can get some water. So please stick around. We're going to do uh, more great tunes. All different styles, things of that, and all get to hear everybody solo a little bit more. So please stick around. This will be the last tune of sort of this first mini set. Thank you. 
Uh, that was a Sufjan Stevens song called Death with Dignity. Um, uh, the next two we're going to do is uh, one of my favorite ballads uh, entitled Darn That Dream. Uh, my favorite recording of this uh, was done by a saxophone player named Seamus Blake, one of my favorite saxophone players right now. Um, and it's just a tune that's always kind of stuck with me. The lyrics are really beautiful as well. Um, so we're going to slow things down just a little bit and, and do this ballad here. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, I, I do want to take a moment because I don't want um, I don't want this to go um, unrecognized or let him go unrecognized. Um, I, I attribute so much of what I know as a saxophone player, um, and I tell my students this all the time, especially my, my younger saxophone students that are looking at you know where to go to college and things of that nature. And I said, I said if you really want to study saxophone, you have to go to Webster and you have to study with Paul Demarius because. He will teach you everything you possibly need to know about playing the saxophone and then some, and just about music and, and life and everything. And I attribute so much of, of what I know as a musician, and especially as a saxophone, to Paul. Um, I, I studied with him for four years at Webster and even went back after Webster just to get a few more lessons in and just sneak it a little bit, try to get a little bit more knowledge from it. And I still learn so much when I get to hear him play, when I get to talk to him. And it's, it's great to be able to catch up with him just a couple times a year. And uh, I'm, I'm really honored that he even came today because, um, you know, it's, it made me a little nervous, but I was just so pleased that he was here because he's been such an influence on me. So um, can we just, I mean, and, and just in addition to that, he's just been a gift to St. Louis as far as a musician and educator, um, the longtime uh, head of jazz studies at Webster, and it's just my pleasure that he's here and that I have a chance to work with him. Paul Marinus. <laughs> So uh, here's Darn That Dream. Okay. So I'll, I'll play the first two bass sections by myself, and then I'll kind of keep time for you guys can come in on the bass sections. So like on that two five going into the first. Thank you. 
you very much. Um, we've got two more tunes for you. The next tune we're going to do um, is a tune that I had heard but I had never played uh, until um, I got called to play with a guy named Kevin Bowers, who is an incredible drummer, composer, multi-instrumentalist here in St. Louis. Um, he was playing a show at the Bistro, and, and I had the great fortune to fill in for someone, uh, actually an employee here, Ben Reese. Uh, he was playing with uh, Kevin, and he asked me to fill in with, for him. And one of the tunes on the list was this tune we're about to play. So I, I started chatting it, and I was like, this is such a great tune. And, and it's a Chick Corea tune, and I love everything that Chick writes. He's one of my favorite composers, and it was just such a such a fun tune to work on. And he wanted me to play it on clarinet. And I was like, this is going to be so exciting. And it ended up getting cut from the set. But I was, you know, so I was really disappointed, but I was like, well, I have to play this song because I love it so much. And it's so much fun to play it. And, uh, the second you hear it, you'll be like, oh yeah, this is definitely Chick Corea. So if you know any Chick Corea tunes, um, this, is, this is definitely one of his classics. This is called Armando's Rumba. I hope you enjoy it.
uh, the last tune we're going to play um, is a tune written by uh, someone who uh, is most known for his time in St. Louis. Uh, he actually went to Washington University, uh, and his name's Oliver Nelson. Great tenor saxophone player, alto saxophone player, but known more for his composing. Um, I think probably one of his more famous tunes was the theme song uh, to The Six Million Dollar Man, but he also wrote some really wonderful movie scores, uh, big band charts, and even orchestral pieces. Um, and his record, Blues in the Abstract Truth, is probably my favorite jazz record of all time. Such an interesting pairing of, of instrumentalists. Uh, he was playing alto and tenor saxophone, along with Eric Dolphy uh, playing flute and alto sax, which is more of kind of an avant-garde uh, saxophone player, along with, um, I believe it's Freddie Hubbard playing trumpet, uh, George Barrow playing baritone saxophone, Bill Evans playing piano as a sideman, um, and let's see, Rory Haynes was playing drums, I can't remember who was playing bass. Paul Chambers. Paul Chambers, thank you. Um, so, <laughs> awesome. So, uh, you know, and just a real interesting mix of, of personalities on this record of really incredible compositions, and, it's, and most of the tunes were written almost in like a like a mini big band format with the, with the four horns playing at once. And this is actually one of those tunes that was written for four horns, but we're gonna try to do it with just one horn. Um, and it's, I love every tune on the record. Every tune is, is just an absolute incredible composition, but for whatever reason, this one always sticks with me. So this is a tune called Butch and Butch. It's the last track on, on the record. And uh, it's, every tune on the record is a blues, but they all take sort of different ways to get there. So this one has a really uh, fun, uh, melody, and then we just go into a good old blues. Uh, before I finish up again, I want to thank Zach Quest for this opportunity, thank Zach and Mark and the whole Zach Quest crew for um, allowing me to do this. It's, it's kind of a kind of a dream come true seeing all these other saxophone players in town and just admiring them uh, and, and featuring them here. But so finally be able to do this myself, it, it's just a huge honor, and I'm I'm incredibly humbled to to do this and to play with these great musicians and to get to pick out some tunes for you. So um, I hope you've enjoyed your afternoon, and uh, this is Bush and Bush. Thank <clears throat> you.